How do you make your ham radio signals louder? Well, it could cost you a lot of money, but maybe it wouldn't cost you as much as you think. Let me explain. Many of us want to have louder signals for various reasons, mainly I suspect so that we can work the DX and break, up, break into the pileups and all the other things that uh, loud signals bring us. But you know, loud signals can cost you money. The most obvious way to have a loud signal, I suppose, is to buy yourself an amplifier. There's nothing wrong with that. Amplifiers are great. They give you at least one S point improvement usually, and a bit more, depends on what your base power is. But uh, you can get an amplifier which will certainly give you 6 dB of gain, and that's a gain on all bands. So that's the good thing about an amplifier. It's, it's a dead cert. You're going to have a louder signal. And an amplifier that gives you about 6 or 7 dB gain is not far removed from a 3-element Yagi. But uh, unlike a 3-element Yagi, you get that gain on all the bands from 160 metres to 10 metres, assuming that you operate on those bands. So it's a good investment, but the downside, of course, is that it's going to cost you money. If you buy a new amplifier, you're going to spend at least £2,000 normally, and probably significantly more. And if you buy a solid state amplifier, you've probably then got to buy yourself an antenna matching unit for some of the bands, because a solid state linear amplifier likes to see a low VSWR. So an amplifier will do the job, but it does mean to say that you've got to part with some hard earned cash. Of course, you could put a better aerial up. You could put your aerial up higher in the air. You could get a bigger mast. You could even get a telescopic tower. Ah, oh, but wait a minute. That costs money, doesn't it? Oh, and of course you need planning permission, wouldn't you? Well, yes, the trouble with planning permission is once you've asked, you've been turned down, you're rather stuffed, aren't you? Hmm. So, uh, well, you could put a big aerial up, but hmm. It's going to cost money anyway, isn't it? And that's not what we're on about in this video. We want to try and get a slightly louder signal, but without having to pay out for it. Yeah, so perhaps we'll, we'll put the aerial on the back burner for the moment. So can you make your signal louder without either of those options? Well, yes, you can. There's one or two things on your transceiver that will help you. Now, we've all got in our transceivers something called automatic level control and that's a fairly uh, simple basic circuit that works fairly slowly but it stops you overdriving your transceiver if you were to overdrive your transceiver you'd have some distortion and you might even damage it so there's an automatic level control that stops you overloading your transceiver but everybody's got one of those and it's very slow acting and it doesn't actually give you much, if anything, in the way of signal boost. Microphone, well, you need a decent microphone, I suppose, but, you know, I've always managed with a handheld microphone. By the way, a handheld microphone is omnidirectional, so it's going to pick up all sorts of noises in the room. So make sure you close speak to it. The best way to use a hand microphone is close speak. Don't shout, but close speak. Then you'll get the best quality. Now, there is something that many hams are blessed with and many aren't blessed with, and that is a good voice. Not everybody's got a good voice that penetrates. My voice is pretty bland, actually, so I don't get too much help with my voice. But there are those that have got this sort of real penetrating voice, and they get quite a few dB gain, I think, um, in terms of intelligibility. But if you haven't got that voice, well tough you're stuck and uh, join the join the party but there are other things you can do you've got something on your transceiver called a compressor and you also got something on your transceiver called a gain control mic gain control and you may well have on your transceiver an eq control those three controls can help you let me go through one by one the mic gain control is there in order to be used intelligently. And you need that turned up so that you reach the point 
where there's no obvious increase in output. So speaking to the microphone and adjust the mic gain, uh, you'll see the output come up. And if you don't see any improvement beyond a certain point, that's about right for you. There's no point in overdriving uh, the mic gain. You've also got a power gain as well, which I didn't mention, but uh, one assumes that uh, uh, if you want to improve your signal, you're going to run maximum power, which on many transceivers is 100 watts. But then you've got something called an equalizer, and an equalizer basically changes the frequency response. And it may actually help you if you're one of those guys like me, you've got a bland voice. It's nice to give a little bit of extra punch, and you can do that by adjusting the EQ. Now, some of the EQs are quite comprehensive, others are fairly simple, and basically it's trial and error. But the most likely thing you want to do is to increase the mid-range somewhat. You don't really need to increase the bass, and there's not a lot of point in increasing the top end, really, because it doesn't carry too much intelligibility. So it's the mid-range which you might want to increase. But as I say, it's trial and error. What I suggest you do is you sit down, make yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, and spend about uh, 10 or 20 minutes getting used to the EQ control on your transceiver, and then experiment with it. And ideally, find a local station uh, who was prepared to spend a bit of time with you to do some A-B testing. It's well worth the time spent because the outcome will probably be a better sound and a more balanced signal. The most interesting control is the, the compression control. What is compression? Well, compression actually reduces the dynamic range of the signal. Now, you may well have heard this on radio. If you ever listen to the radio, and then all of a sudden an advert comes up on the radio, and it's louder. It's louder than the program you're listening to. Well, the reason it's louder is because they've added compression to the signal. And the reason they add compression to the signal is so that you hear the advert. It stands out. And you want your signal to stand out. So adding compression is quite a serious option and almost certainly you've got a compressor of some sort built into your transceiver if it's a fairly recent design. Now the compression works in tandem really with the mic gain control. You don't want more mic gain than you, you need in order to have a reasonable signal. As I said just now, uh, advance your mic gain until you don't see any increase in the signal level. No point in going beyond that. Compression, usually the compression control is calibrated and you'll see the benefit if you've got a fairly lively VSWR meter or you've got one of these bar graph displays on the transceiver. You'll see that as you, in, as you turn the compression up, so the average power of your transceiver will actually increase. And it's this average power that you really are trying to achieve. If you can increase the average power, you'll increase the torque power. Your signal will sound louder, even though your peak power is still the same. It's still, for example, 100 watts, but you've raised that, that level, the average level from say 30 or 40 watts up to 60 or 70 watts. It's a worthwhile gain and it's very beneficial in terms of being heard and your signal standing out without having to have an amplifier and without having to change your antenna system. Now, the compressor built into most transceivers is fairly basic. It's not very fast acting, but it does increase the average uh, power of your uh, transceiver and therefore will give you some benefit. If you look on the screen here, you'll see that I've got a recording and there's no compression at all. This is how the signal would sound without any form of compression. Hello CQ, CQ, this is Golf 3 Oscar, Julia Victor, G3OJV, Colin CQ, 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 Golf 3 Oscar, Julia... So now here you'll see I've added some compression. Hello CQ, CQ, this is Golf 3 Oscar, Julia Victor, G3OJV, Colin CQ, 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 Golf 3 Oscar, Julia Victor, Colin CQ. It's interesting to compare the waveform with the first recording and compared it with this recording, you might want to go back and do an A-B test between the two of them. Now I applied pretty heavy compression there just to demonstrate the point. And I was using a, a studio microphone here and um, a mixer. 
Uh, normally I would have liked to use the handheld microphone but I didn't have the adapter to uh, be able to plug the handheld microphone into the mixer but I think uh, you get you get the idea. I mean, in the particular demonstration I just did there was more bass than you'd normally have on a uh, amateur radio transmission but it does show that you can get a, a louder signal if you apply some compression. So if you follow what I've suggested here, you'll probably end up with a better sounding signal and a signal that sounds louder. Now there is one other interesting option which I haven't um, pursued at the moment, but I was reminded recently in the QSO that you can use an external compressor. Now there are some one or two on the market, but perhaps more interestingly, you can use a software compressor. There are some software compressors on the internet. And basically what you do is, and by the way, I think there are some free ones. Basically what you do, you install the compressor on your computer and then you use a microphone that feeds into the computer, goes into the compressor, then you take the output of the compressor into your mic input on your transceiver. The only thing is, of course, you've got to arrange some sort of PT because you won't have the uh, inbuilt PT. But it's an interesting option. And when I was listening to the station recently, the, the compression was excellent. The quality was really nice. It was a really punchy signal. So it's worth investigating. In the meantime, thank you for your support on this channel. By the way, don't forget Waters and Stanton and Milton Keynes, very near the M1, so easy to get to for a lot of people. We've got a wide range of products there, and whether it be a transceiver or an antenna or an accessory, you'll be more than welcome. We do part exchange, of course, excellent part exchange deals. If you've got any questions, just pick up the phone and speak to one of the guys there. Um, they're all licensed am amateurs, so they know what they're talking about and I'm sure you'll get a good deal there, so don't forget. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, you take care, and as usual, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.